Hi, and welcome to DRBD video tutorial. DRBD is a Linux-based software component that facilitates the replacement of shared storage systems by network mirroring. It makes it possible to maintain consistency of data among multiple systems in network and also ensures high availability for Linux applications. DRBD can be understood as network-based RAID 1. It refers to a block devices designed as a building block to form high availability clusters. This is done by mirroring a whole block device via an assigned network. DRPD can be implemented on servers running serverware or PBXware standalone installation. For the software to continue running on another machine in case of failover, software license, whether it be serverware or PBXware, must contain MAC addresses of both servers. You need two servers identical in storage to achieve the minimum degree of high availability. Both servers should have same hard drive model equal in disk capacity, and if possible, should be from the same manufacturer. This is because two hard drives from different manufacturers may have equal total capacity. However, they can still have different free space available. At any given time, only one server can be a primary server. Primary server has a home partition mounted on it, and ideally all VPSs started and running. Home partition contains all Bicom system services, including serverware, PBXware, and other VPSs, and all VPSs configuration settings. While in secondary state, server does not have home partition mounted, it only has essential Linux processes running. In our example, server A is currently primary server, and is replicating data to a secondary server, server B. That replication is synchronous, which means that application only sees I.O. completion when it has completed on both servers. The two servers communicate over the secondary interfaces ETH1 on port 3470 and 3471, and are connected directly via cable. Both secondary interfaces work on separate networks. With the help of Sysmonit, DRBD knows if the communication between two servers is working. Secondary server is constantly setting a unique ping to the primary server, and the primary server answers on each ping received. This is how Sysmonit knows that the communication between two servers is working, and that the primary server is up. If you lose primary server A for any reason, for example due to hardware failure, the primary server will stop answering on pings on a secondary interface. Secondary server will note that there is something wrong with the primary server, and using Sysmonit and DRBD, your service moves to a secondary server B, and the server B changes its status from secondary to primary. Once server B has taken primary role, it mounts the home partition and starts all VPSs and services, exactly as they were set on server A. Once you have replaced the hardware on a server A, it becomes a secondary server, and all data from current primary server, server B, is now replicated on a server A. From this point forward, their roles will be switched. Server A will continue to ping server B, until something happens to server B, in which case, server A takes over the primary role. In order to access primary server, you would use the virtual, also known as floating IP address. Floating IP address binds to a primary interface of the primary server. This means that while server A is in primary state, it will be accessible via three IP addresses. In our case, that's 10.1.213.112 on a primary network interface, 192.168.0.12 on a secondary network interface, and 10.1.213.114 on the floating IP address. The purpose of floating IP address is that it points always to the primary server. For example, if server B is in primary state, floating IP address will point to a server B, or vice versa, if server A is in primary state, floating IP address will point to a server A. Thank you for watching this video, and if you need more help, be sure to visit Bicom Systems Wikimedia page.